about um, i just seen this on the timeline it looks like my guy mark noble has um finally gave his speech at west ham concerning his 18 year career at the club coming to an end and him kind of going to do bigger and better things from what i've seen online mark noble west ham legend is retiring from football completely so i thought he was just going to you know he's basically not having his contract renewed at West Ham and moving on somewhere else but he's legitimately hanging up his boots and just retiring from football which I think is a pretty epic way to end the career he's ending his career as a one-man club playing for his boyhood club and he's ending it at the top he's not going to play in the championship which he could easily play he could easily play for a Premier League club still I think he could be a decent player for a Premier League club especially a Premier League club coming into the Premier League um, but he clearly wants to you know enjoy his retirement enjoy it with his health still in a relatively good place with his body not as broken as maybe other people are um and also end it on his terms you know what i mean that's always a good thing i think in life in general whether it's work whether it's sport and achievement whatever it may be if you're able to kind of step away from it on your own terms it does do something to your will to your determination to your sense of satisfaction whatever it may be so big up mark noble for that one so let's quickly play a little clip of him talking um i guess this is at west ham giving his little speech as he heads into his last game for the club ever Obviously, it's emotional. It's been a, I've been at obviously this club longer than I've, um, I haven't, if you know what I mean. So I joined at 11, um, had an incredible time. As we all know, some up, ups and downs. It's, <laughs> it's been tough at times, let me tell you. But um, before before you, you, we start the questions, I think that after the season we've had as, as players and a, a group of staff, um, <coughs> I'm going to get emotional now. Um, I think I think that we should we should all stand up and and congratulate the staff and the players for what they've done this year. <laughs> um, as I said, sometimes uh, you you have to really. Uh, roll up your socks and lace your boots up and go again and um, for me the last two years not playing as much but being able to share my times with the boys has been <laughs> amazing <laughs> obviously I, I joined us at 11 and um, I remember my f first day at Chapel Leaf and uh, we, uh, I was at Arsenal before that, and we was always late because I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Um, and uh, we, could, we couldn't get there on time, and West Ham had, was clear that they, they wanted me from a young age, so I um, joined at 11, and, and obviously I haven't looked back, but when, you, when, you, when you're a, a, a supporter of the club like everyone here is, and, and you get to, to, to play for West Ham, and you get to captain the club you support. Um, you can you can honestly say that I've probably lived everyone's dream in here. One hundred percent, man, absolute legend. And it's weird because I actually went to school with this guy. Like I think I'm pretty sure you went to school. It was either it was definitely secondary school, so all of secondary school, and then for sure was it primary school? It wasn't primary school. But one thing I remember from young was that he was always good at football and this was when we were all trying to make it we we're all trying to be pro we all went to get signed we all had dreams of playing in the park and that also in his car breaking down outside of the park and there's him seeing us play and went to sign us yeah i mean we had these really weird fantasies but there were a couple of people in our year or in our kind of you know um, school in general who were basically pro at that age right at that young age imagine they were coming into school wearing england kits playing for the england you know under whatever they were, age they were playing for you know proper premier league clubs wearing the, the kind of kid version of it it just used to freak you out like what the hell i'm playing for this sunday league team with pro star kits and umbro shorts and adidas socks that like, just mismatch of mismatch and you're coming in decked out head to toe in sponsored gear with your initials on it like cars picking you up like crazy stuff it just used to blow your mind but one of the things i really remember strikingly about mark from all the times i've kind of known him and again i haven't seen the guy in many many years but whenever i have kind of bumped into him he's always been really nice as a just just gentlemanly do you know what i mean in terms of how he carries himself was that he was always like this he was always a grown-up 
Do you know what I mean like he kind of matured way quicker than all of the, all the other boys in our in our kind of you know age range, whatever it may have been, which was always kind of impressive to see. And then um, he kind of I think had that effect of rubbing off on other people, especially if you were, I guess if you wanted to be his friend and you wanted to hang out with him and be like one of his people that are in his circle, it probably you know it's probably in your best interest to smarten up, wise up, and get a bit more mature because he wasn't going to have you know distractions around him because obviously he was trying to make a professional football player. And that's one thing I also remember. I never saw Mark at parties. That's one thing you, I think, was a great realization and wake up call for me at that age when I was young. It was a clear representation or clear example of what it requires, what's required to achieve that level of success in a field, in a arena, in an area of life which is highly competitive professional football, right? Especially in the UK, everyone wants to be a professional football player. Similar to basketball, I'd imagine in the US, the standard of players here is just really high because everyone can play, everyone can do kick ups, everyone can control the ball, everyone can pass with both feet for the most part, especially if you're playing in like Sunday League, Saturday League level. So the competition to be, be pro at some of the best clubs in the country is really high because there's not enough spaces for people basically. So if you want to make the difference and you want to make ensure that you have a career for the long term, you have to sacrifice things. And Mark Noble sacrificed the youth, basically a childhood. I hardly saw the guy outside of school, hardly if ever. And we lived essentially five minutes away from each other. Maybe I would say even 60 second walk one time yeah where when I used to live in Beckton, we basically lived around the corner from each other and I hardly saw the guy outside of school. Hardly, hardly ever. Um and this is a testament to him. You know what I mean, his family, because I'm pretty sure he's still with the same girl. He's go out with a girl called Cardi back in the day when we were in school. I'm pretty sure he's still married to her now for, to, to this day. They have kids together and stuff. He's probably still hanging around with the same group of friends that he was with back then. Small circle, tight circle, family and friends only. And he sacrificed a lot back then to be successful as easy as now. It's so much. And it's interesting too, because at the same time that he was being pro, and I, I remember when he was at Arsenal and he went to West Ham. And again, it's weird too, because, you know, people think of you know mark noble as this kind of workhorse midfielder kind of keep it simple type of guy but back in school he was incredibly skillful i don't know if that gets coached out of you or if that was just a kind of a personality you have when you're young and then you kind of evolve into the player that you want to be when you're older but he was very very skillful when we were younger incredibly skillful he used to score goals for fun he was more of an attacking midfielder than he was a defensive like interesting how things kind of change in it but regardless going back to the story there was another guy in our year too who i won't mention because you know it's just out of order to kind of get people you know names out there and make it seem like yo you're trying to diminish one person but it was just interesting to see how different lives can turn out when you're both just given the same opportunities in life to basically you know solidify your future and play you know the, the greatest sport in the world at the highest level right in terms of football but there's another guy as well that mark was playing with at the same time who they were the only two guys who were basically pro at that time representing england representing premier league clubs or like championship clubs at the time maybe they were at the time and he, i think at that time that guy was playing maybe reserve team football for them at that time it was fucking insane how the level they were but then suddenly out of nowhere I remember seeing Mark Noble randomly once driving a Range Rover Sport somewhere around here when we were young, thinking, whoa, do you know what I mean, this, I went to school with this kid and he's driving that at this age, absolutely insane. And then the next time I saw the other guy who t career didn't work out for him, I see him outside of an Iceland with his top off with a pit bull, do you know what I mean, with his hand down his trousers, like acting like a bad man. And I'm like, wow, this is really strange because when we grew up, he was never on, you know, badness or anything, never on that sort of time. And then suddenly, I don't know what happened. Maybe, you know, maybe not being, not being able to sign pro and maybe whatever else happened in life kind of changed him and maybe he got bad influences. I don't really know. But I just remember seeing that and being kind of reminded of just how quickly life can change for you. you know I mean, you get given all the opportunities and then a couple of bad choices here and there and then suddenly you're on some other path that you probably never had any idea that you were going to end up being on. You're just having to make the best of it. So it kind of, you know, it's a shame, but it kind of is what it is. But yeah, um, big up to Mark Noble, absolute legend, 18 years of service at West Ham. He'll go down as absolute legend. From what I've read online, it looks like he wants to go um, to boardroom level. 
from what I've seen, I've seen articles talking about coaching. I've seen articles talking about him being a director of football, which I love. I love the idea of maybe him spearheading that to be a trend with some younger players coming up now. Maybe when they're retired, there'll be a lot more of them maybe going into boardroom type stuff. So we have a prolifera of absolutely well, um, well-educated, experienced players in the highest levels of football and boardroom level dictating things that'd be awesome the similar way that they do it in spain they have it in germany in certain parts of italy too now nowadays you know i mean come football ex-players coming in and occupying those positions and kind of steering the club in the right direction in terms of overall vision that'd be sick to see so you know wish the guy success obviously going forward i think he'll be completely fine he's always had a good head and shoulders anyway but i'm sure you know ending the career the way he did you know again like he mentioned not being able to play as much was probably a bit bittersweet but still man he played at the highest level played for his local boyhood club was able to represent you know for the club throughout all the leagues that they played at the time he was in there so yeah big up to Malcolm Noble man absolute legend of West Ham bona fide legend actually absolute bona fide legend